Hello and welcome to this week's tutorial. I'm going to be painting the last of the four figures for the diorama I've been making. And this one's a little different. It's going to be a bit of a focal point of the diorama, so I want to give them a white winter camouflage kind of look. So in order to do this, I used Games Workshop Ulther and, Ulther and Grey. I think I pronounced that correctly. It's got a nice blue tint to it. Um, it's very light grey, but it worked really well in this case. Also added a lot of paint retarder so I could really blend in the subsequent shadows and highlights. And I thought I'd just do the trousers first to keep the paint in a malleable state so I could add the weathering. So first up I added um, some mud effects using Vallejo Black Brown. And this is really quite diluted. And again, where the paint is still really quite wet, it kind of fused with the paint, give a nice grounding, grubby appearance which work really nicely. It, it almost fuses the paint a little too much, so as you can see, I had to go back and add another layer, but it, it's interesting if you paint this in different stages while the paint is in different stages of drying, you get significantly more varied mud effects rather than just doing them all at the end. I'm also adding some patches just to the uh, upper legs where mud would have splashed and so on and so forth and also using it to start I suppose this adding some shadows to the material as well so once that was done I started adding the shadows properly with um, some Games Workshop Dawnstone Grey I'm trying not to paint lines again I'm trying to blend this in with the existing base coat um, just to get a more natural effect it can look a little stark if you just sort of paint lines on as such I then add some highlights with um, White Scar from Games Workshop. Again, using the side of the brush, just on the, on the, the tops of the creases of the material, just to form some contrast. And um, this whole process, again, like with the other miniatures, I went sort of backwards and forwards. It's not like you do the highlights and then the lowlights. So you see, just adding a bit more weathering to the bottom of the trousers. This time with some Burnt Umber, my, my favorite <laughs> form of mud painting, I suppose. And um, it's slowly starting to come together. You can see there's some nice contrasts on the trousers, but it's got a way to go yet. So next up, the tunic was painted in much the same way. You see I'm adding some black-brown weathering just on the sleeves there. And um, this followed the same process as the trousers. Now, I forgot to paint the bottom of the tunic, so uh, hastily added some of the base coat and made sure the shadows, because obviously they are in shadow, were that much deeper and darker than they were on the upper surfaces of the coat. Again, just taking a moment to make sure I covered everything. It's a very intricate miniature, it's very easy to miss stuff. So now you see I'm just adding some shadows to the, uh, the bottom of the coat. I did quite a bit of weathering on the sleeves, so now I'm adding some white highlights on the tops of the creases of the material just to make it look a bit more natural because I thought the weathering kind of dominated the base coat a little. And then I'm adding some, yeah, you guessed it, burnt umber to the bottom of the coat. Again, to add some contrast, some highlights, but just to, to make the area look suitably grubby. And then burnt umber once again at the bottom of the trouser legs, just to get a really nice muddy appearance. So next up, the bag was painted life colour dark green. And I had to be careful when painting the straps of the rucksack and the bag, because they cross over and, and you had to be really quite careful to define the different colours and the uniform underneath so it took a while going backwards and forwards but I was really pleased with how it came out it, it, it didn't look too stark the effect looked nice and natural um, again much a testament to the molding of the figure as much as anything else so the gas mask was then given a coat of life colour vulcanised rubber from the shades of black set and subsequently at the end of the build it was given a wash of Vallejo black paint heavily diluted just to really pick out the details. The gun was given an overall coat of life colour burnt black from the shades of black set in keeping with all the other figures that I painted so far. I was going to add some straps as well towards the end of the build on all the figures for their rifles. Now the knee pads were I don't know, a little tricky to paint, you wouldn't think so, but I gave them a wash of Vallejo Black and I wasn't really that pleased with the effect. I, I, I didn't think it worked very well and didn't seem in keeping with the rest of the model. So I went back and gave them a diluted coat of Life Colour Dirty Black from the Shades of Black set, just to give them a, a bit more contrast, I suppose. You can see I'm doing that here. And once that was completed, the model was pretty much done. So here's the finished figure. Once again, it was great fun to paint, just so much detail to bring out. 
and it, it was really interesting trying to do a natural winter camouflage effect. Once again, I have to thank the Last Cavalry for their excellent winter camo tutorial. And um, next week, we'll be dealing with a diorama base. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next week. Take care.